prices um, seem to be turning. Um, it's difficult to say the commodity prices because you have to delve deeper and then they look very different as, as you disaggregate them. But uh, that has changed and uh, what, what is particularly encouraging to me is that net profits by quarter has definitely changed. Um, the, the latest data from uh, Status A was I think the third quarter last year. Mining in this country as you know is still a very important part of the economy. So I think it's very important that you have everybody here who reflects on African mining so that we can see where we are and what it is that we need to do better. Because clearly the sector, as I said, the sector is very important, employs lots of people, it brings in a lot of foreign capital and so it has to succeed. The conference is definitely a continental conference and um, so my hope would be that um, this triggers the next steps of, of creating greater opportunities for investment in African mining. But it's going to require further reform on the mining policy side in African countries and it's going to require um, investors becoming more comfortable over time that we're dealing with the issues both in South Africa and in the continent um, which create a better platform for investment over time. Now let's get a little more details on what's going on in the mining in Daba. Sumitra Naidu joins us now live from Johannesburg. Um, Sumitra, Mining companies have threatened to sue the state over the provision to maintain the 26% uh, black ownership levels. Uh, walk us through the arguments for and against that ownership level. <laughs> Well, that seems to be the real sticking point here, Rama. The Chamber of Mines, representing several mining companies, says it is in support of the new mining charter's main aim to address racial inequality, effectively transformation in this industry. For the mining industry, this lies in that 26% black ownership clause that you talk of. Most mining companies have failed to meet uh, the targets. Meeting the 26% provides a huge challenge for them. And what the mining companies are saying is there needs to be more clarity and how this ownership works, what happens when black shareholders buy in but later sell off their shares. So the Chamber of uh, Mines went to court last year seeking a determination on the charter's once empowered, always empowered principle. The company has wanted clarity on whether the ownership element of the mining charter should be a continuous compliance requirement for the duration of the mining right as argued by the Department of Mineral Resources, or a once-off requirement as argued by the Chamber of Mines. So the court action has been put on hold for now. Um, the Chamber is still uh, negotiating with the Department. There's a few weeks left until that charter is uh, published, but we're not clear on whether they will actually find some agreement, but that really, that 26% ownership remains the main sticking point here. Indeed, uh, that of course in, 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 in the current environment is a pretty interesting story. But let's talk about the chart in itself. It also does require mining companies to provide housing and other social amenities uh, to their employees. But that's not happening across the board, Lonmin being one very prominent example. Why is that requirement so hard to meet? That's right. But, you know, there has been compliance in, um, in this area, but not across all mining companies. Not all of these companies are meeting the conditions set out as in the previous charter. Lonman was meant to provide around 5,500 housing units and make about $7.4 million available annually since 2012 for community upliftment. But the company backtracked somewhat, blaming its failure to provide all of this um, on the weak economic conditions and the market constraints affecting the company. We also saw uh, Amnesty International report coming out last year detailing the poor housing conditions and poverty affecting the over 20,000 miners in this country. And uh, Lonman admitted at that time that it was unable to improve on the conditions of over 13,000 workers. So there's still that lo there's, there's lots here that needs to be done in terms of uplifting all of these mining communities. Indeed, but all of these things do cost quite a bit of money. So does this proposed charter have any provisions linking the fulfillment of goals in it, like the housing that we've just talked about, to say the profitability of these mining companies? 
that is a huge constraint for the mining houses and all of them are saying that it will actually affect their prof uh, profitability but you know we we also heard the mines minister Mosaben Zizwane speaking in uh, Cape Town today and uh, very resolute insisting that this charter will go ahead and yes we know that there are negotiations underway um, but very few analysts believe that there will be any changes and under the revised charter that we're looking at at the moment all mining houses will have to contribute a minimum of one percent of their annual turnover towards local community development and labor sending areas all of these conditions are very important um, and to note as they hinge on the respective licenses so all of these conditions need to be met or these licenses could be revoked Indeed. One last question for you, Sumitra. According to the Chamber of Mines, um, mining companies right across the board, collectively, they lost close to 40 billion rand in the 2015-2016 fiscal year. So what's the outlook for the main commodities, gold, coal, platinum, for this year? Well, uh, most analysts believe that, uh, you know, this outlook is looking much better. The companies say that they still... Um, they're still in a lot of trouble. They're still getting over the last commodity cycle where we saw a serious slump there. Still companies talking of job losses. We heard um, Anglo Gold Ashanti talking of over 3,000 job losses this year. It's busy negotiating with the unions. But it does seem, if you look at the markets, it does seem to be looking a little bit better than last year. The commodity slump has subsided. Oil prices are ticking up. And, the, and on the local front, the main constraint was around power supply. And this is near resolved input costs have eased a bit so they are you know analysts are expecting that there would be some relief in this area the mining companies would be looking better of course the weaker dollar if it continues this way would also work in our favor the world bank though increased its uh, 2017 price outlook as well for both metals and oil the main metals rose towards the end of last year and strong investor demand silver did well gold prices though still lagging but traders expect some upward movement here platinum prices looking up they were up 0.6% uh, last week and analysts expect more upside this year as China comes back online with uh, infrastructure spending. Indeed and of course China is a huge consumer both the coal and the platinum that comes right out of the ground in uh, South Africa. Thank you for that. That's Mitch and I do live of course tonight in Johannesburg.